found a body which could be that of a missing young woman. Now the body was found in that shallow grave about 8 o'clock last night. A uh, body of short stature uh, that was covered with dirt and uh, is going to have to be examined tomorrow. As soon as the body was removed by ambulance at 3 a.m., the testing began to determine if this was indeed Jennifer Schweiger, the 12-year-old girl with Down syndrome who disappeared five weeks ago, last seen walking hand-in-hand -hand with a local drifter. Last week, police arrested 43-year-old Andre Rand, a convicted child sex offender, and charged him with kidnapping Jennifer. Now they want to know if Rand is connected to the disappearance of other Staten Island girls. There may be other bodies there, we don't know. The Schrager family remain in their brown and yellow home, waiting for the word. The light on their tiny porch remains lit. A little more, and I hit something soft, and it looks and seems white, which was natural. Kidnapping Jennifer Schweiger, Andre Rand, has told the Daily News that he did not kill her. He says that he even broke down and cried when he heard that her body had been found. He came out for the first time since his arrest. So I've made it back from Belgium. It was an amazing trip, but now I'm back in the Tri-State area here. I'm with Journey with Jay, and since it's autumn and we're right around Halloween, I wanted to come here. We've been talking about coming here together for a long time. This is the New York Farm Colony. If you've ever heard of the boogeyman, Cropsey, uh, this, there's a tie-in with this place here. Now he worked at Willowbrook, of course, Willowbrook was uh, the infamous place where Geraldo Rivera did his groundbreaking work exposing the atrocities, the horrors of those insane asylums for children and for adults. And um, But this place was there before, before Willowbrook, yeah. built in the 1800s, late 1800s. Um, this place closed in 1975. And the crazy thing about it is some of those people came and lived here, just amongst the uh, abandoned buildings. And one of those people was the infamous Cropsey. This is a very creepy place, so it's perfect for this time of year. Uh, and the stories, the true stories of the disappearing of the children The Staten Island Farm Colony opened in 1867. It was intended to provide shelter and work for the poor, the mentally ill, uh, elderly populations, aimed to create a self-sufficient community where residents could engage in farming and related activities. But over the years, the facility evolved in its purpose and practices, reflecting broader societal changes regarding mental health and welfare. Geraldo's bombshell report at Willowbrook in 1972 shined a bright light on all of these care facilities, exposing subpar conditions and practices. And even here, there was an issue with overcrowding, understaffed and underfunded, many accounts of abuse and neglect, lack of proper attention to personal hygiene and mental health care. Really what happened was the farm colony shifted over the years from providing care and rehabilitation to just housing the individuals. The farm colony ultimately closed in 1975 following years of criticism regarding its conditions and its treatment of its residents. Look at the numbers on the back of it, 1970. January 22nd, 1970. Now, throughout the decades, especially on Staten Island, Cropsey was known for being just this boogeyman, a subject of many stories, really, ghost stories. In fact, even in this area, in this huge forested area, there was a Boy Scout camp that was fully functioning while these places were completely abandoned in the same woods. So you can imagine being a Boy Scout and going camping and hearing these stories of this creepy man who used to snatch children up. And lo and behold, it was true. That man's name was Andre Rand. And Andre never worked here. He worked at Willowbrook. 
just really on the other side of this forest. Willowbrook is gone. It was closed down in 1987 because of those atrocities that were happening there. Um, but he apparently did live here. He camped here after this, long after this place was abandoned. Really have to watch your step here in these places. So many believe that these bodies are buried or could be buried in this woods in right where we are because this is where Cropsey had a camp. He actually lived in these buildings. After Willowbrook closed down in 87, some of those people came to live here. This was already abandoned for over 10 years at that point. You know, it's, it's interesting how there were so many asylums around, especially on the East Coast here. I don't know why, but uh, they, were, they were just everywhere, seemingly. And now there's so few of them. And you have to wonder, wh why aren't they around anymore? Wh where are all these people that needed to be in these asylums? I, did, is this just modern medicine that maybe they don't need to be in these anymore? Is it something that should be brought back? I mean, it was... It went away because of the horrific conditions and the state cutting the, the uh, budgets. But, I don't know. Do they need to make an appearance again? Do they need to make a comeback? We're seeing so many people that are homeless on the streets. Hearing about so much violence that's happening more and more. Do these people need to be in these asylums? Andre Rand, a.k.a. the Pied Piper of Staten Island. Not much is known about his childhood other than his father dying when Rand was 14. His mother was institutionalized at Pilgrim Psychiatric Center. So at a young age, he was exposed to these psych wards. Now, Rand worked at the Willowbrook facility from 1966 to 1968. And then in 1969, he was arrested for the attempted rape of a nine-year-old girl. The only reason it was attempted was because uh, he had taken her in his car and it was in a parking lot. They were both naked, but a police car happened to be driving by and saw him. And uh, so he was arrested for that. It was not until the 70s where things around here got pretty crazy. A number of suspected victims, children and some adults, were vanishing, each with their own chilling series of events. In 1972, five-year-old Alice Pereira was playing with a group of children on the grounds of Tyson's Park Apartments. She disappeared while her eight-year-old brother Angelo had gone into the apartment for a drink. Her disappearance prompted immediate concern and extensive search efforts by the local community and authorities. She has officially been missing since July 7th, 1972. Now, most of these cases, Andre Rand was never convicted or ever brought up on charges, but is really suspected of being the murderer. Case in point, he was working as a painter in Tyson's Lane Apartments, this same apartments that Alice lived in and disappeared from. Another case, probably one of the more fascinating ones for me, was 18-year-old Audrey Nuremberg, missing since July 5th, 1977. Now, the case is stranger than some of the others. Uh, Audrey was diagnosed with hebrephrenia or disorganized schizophrenia. She had paranoia fits, uh, heard voices in her head. She took large doses of Thorazine. Uh, she had spent some time in different hospitals. And she, at the time of her disappearance, she was an outpatient of Kingsborough Psychiatric Center. She lived with her parents in Brooklyn. She's the only child that I know of that is not on Staten Island, who many believe was taken by Andre Rand. She was last seen leaving her house to buy cigarettes, told her mother she would be right back. 
Some investigators believe she may have had an episode and been picked up as a Jane Doe and admitted into a psychiatric facility. Um, now, a, a very curious idea or situation had something to do with an ice cream shop owner near her house. Now, she accused this owner of sexually assaulting her shortly before her disappearance. The strange thing is the owner of that ice cream shop said they did have some sort of relations, but it was consensual. And just three months after Audrey's disappearance, the owner quickly sold his ice cream parlor business and moved away. But it gets even weirder than that. Audrey's father did not like one of her brother's friends. He was forbidden from entering the home. Now that boy or that teenager lived only a block away. Five years after Audrey's disappearance, he was sentenced to 18 years in prison for stabbing a woman. Fortunately, that woman survived. Oddly enough, though, Audrey's father said that after her disappearance, that friend of her brother's stopped asking to enter their home. Now, he was interviewed by the police about Audrey after that stabbing of that woman, and he refused to ever take a polygraph. But why is Audrey Norenberg on this list with a connection to Cropsey or Andre Rand? Well, the day before she vanished, she went with her family to see a movie at the Jerry Lewis Theater. Now, this theater is not too far from their home, maybe 30 minutes or so. Now, Audrey was known to sometimes retrace her steps or repeat her actions. And some speculate that she, for some unknown reason, took the bus back to the theater where she was the night before and possibly became disoriented. Now, the creepy thing is that this theater is located on the edge of the Greenbelt within walking distance from where we are right now. So Jay, what would you call this? Was um, this was housing, right? These, dorms, these were the yeah. They were called, I think okay. They were dorms. And um, for some reason, some of the beds are left in here, left behind. And so this is each each person, no door. No door. You would have just like a towel or a blanket hanging here for good, something privacy. Good point. Yeah. The next one took place October twenty fourth, nineteen seventy eight. 42-year-old Ethel Atwell was an employee at Willowbrook, where she worked as a physical therapy aide. On that morning, 10-24-78, at 6 a.m., she arrived for work. It was still dark out, and the parking lot lights were not on. Some female employees who were inside the building heard a man's voice outside say, Come on, come on. Atwell said, No, you'll beat me. And then she screamed. The employees called the police, and when the police arrived shortly after, they found Ethel's belongings scattered in the parking lot. One shoe, one earring, some buttons, and then they found her car keys about 75 feet away in the woods. But no sign of Ethel, and she's never been found since. Now remember, Willowbrook and the farm colony were, were close to each other, and Andre ran definitely had a camp in the woods near Willowbrook. In fact, Ethel was not even the first employee to disappear. Same year, 1978, just a couple months before, a woman named Shin Lee, 44 years old, she was a nurse who disappeared July 20th, late at night walking home from the Willowbrook campus. Her body was discovered two weeks later in the woods in a shallow grave on the facility grounds on August 6th. Again, no concrete evidence to link Andre Rand, but there are some familiar attributes here.
Then, in 1981, Holly Ann Hughes, a seven-year-old, last seen purchasing soap at a local store at the Port Richmond Deli, just two blocks from her home. August 14, 1983, 11-year-old Thais Jackson disappeared just 12 days after Rand was released from prison. I'm not sure what he was in prison for. And he's believed to have been staying at a campsite in or around or near Baron Hirsch Cemetery, less than half a mile from where Thais was last seen. June 9, 1984, Hank Gaforio. He was mentally disabled. He was 22 years old, but he had the mental and emotional level of a 15-year-old. Now, he was last seen at a bar called the Spa Lounge around 4 a.m. when the business closed. He left the bar to walk home and was never seen again. Now, one of the things about Andre Rand was that he seemed to have this odd obsession with uh, special needs people, special needs uh, children. And some think it's because of he probably had some mental illness anyway, but especially when he worked at Willowbrook, the horrors that he saw, some people theorize that by, by murdering these children, he was basically saving them from having a, a terrible life. That's what some people think. The only child that was ever found was 12-year-old Jennifer Schweiger. She had Down syndrome. And um, her body was found in the woods after exhaustive searches. They found uh, some of her body parts coming up out of the ground from a, a shallow grave. Eyewitnesses say they saw Andre Rand walking hand in hand with Jennifer before she disappeared. He was convicted of first-degree kidnapping, sentenced to 25 years. Now, he would have gotten out of prison, I believe, in 2008. However, 7-year-old Holly Ann Hughes, although her body was never found, Rand was charged with first-degree kidnapping of her as well. Now, he was not convicted of this until 2004. This was based on eyewitness accounts who say they saw him talking to Holly Ann the night where she was at the store, and they saw his green Volkswagen circling the area. I believe at least one person said they saw her get into his car. Now for this, he received another 25 years to life. So at this point, uh, Andre Rand or Cropsey is, he'll be in prison until he's 93, right? 93, I believe, yes. Okay, and uh, 37. All right, 2037. So we'll see what happens if he gets out. I'm sure he'll die before that. Yeah. Uh, unbelievable story. I I heard about Cropsey when I was younger, but I didn't, I, like most people, I didn't know that he was a real person. And these right. stories were based on real people. And uh, somewhere in these woods, possibly, lie his victims. Somewhere. Maybe one day, hopefully one day, they will find all of them. Yeah. But uh, anyway... Uh, big thanks for Journey with Jay for coming with me. Hope you all have a happy Halloween. See you in the next video.